Alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Welcome to another episode of The Dean Show. In this show, we're going to dedicate this to our new brothers in faith. People that have acknowledged what's in their very nature, that there is a creator, and he's one and alone worthy of worship. I'm not going to worship his creation. And what entails his creation? A man, a woman, the sun, the moon, anything that was created that had a beginning is not the creator. That's his creation. I'm not going to submit I'm not going to worship his creation. I'm going to worship the creator. And I'm going to follow the example of his last and final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The same way you would have followed Jesus, Moses, Abraham, if you were living during their time. You declare that there's none worthy of worship except the creator of the heavens and the earth. In Arabic we say Allah and Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his messenger. And now you're our brother in faith. You're a Muslim. And we want to give some beautiful advice to you because you have made the best decision in your life. And we're going to come back with Dr. Sheikh Walid Basuni so we can get some more examples on how you can stay on this way, be firm on this way, and die on this way, the same way of life as all the message of God, and then you can attain the best reward. Peace and happiness in this life and paradise in the next. We'll be right back. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Shay? Very good, very good, alhamdulillah. Thank you very much for finding the time to be with us. We know you're the Vice President of El Maghrib. You're the Imam of the Clear Lake Islamic Center. Very busy, very busy, and I'm, I'm honored that you find the time to be with us here on the Dean Show. I'm the one who's honored by being here, and I, I really appreciate inviting me again to your show. MashaAllah, alhamdulillah. Please send salams. We send salams to your family who's out there, <laughs> and all the Muslims, and this is for the new Muslims. And we started with the greeting of peace. And why I emphasize this, because if I'm wrong, correct me, this is a greeting of all the messengers of God. And all the messengers of God were Muslim, and they did Islam. So the people, they got through all the false propaganda and all this you know, baloney that's attributed with Islam, and they did what's in their very nature. They submitted to the one God, they're doing Islam, now they're Muslim. Yes. What advice do we have for them, Shay? Uh First, uh, uh, all praise due to Allah and His praise and blessings and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and all the prophets and messengers and their followers. Uh, let me start by saying congratulations and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you. It's a wonderful thing. It's, it's a great decision that you uh, have made to uh, accept Allah to be uh, your uh, God and basically the only one that you submit your soul to and you choose Muhammad وسلم, to be your uh, messenger. Uh, by doing this, you're just accepting all the messengers and all the prophets that Allah have sent before. Uh, and as you just said, it's the, the, just the greeting show you it is we are just the natural extension of all these prophets and messengers that Allah sent them to humanity through uh, history. Uh, for those uh, brothers and sisters who became Muslim, I would like to say, first of all, always thank Allah for this great blessings, because this is the greatest blessing that Allah SWT can give it to anyone. Uh, this is the best ni'mah, the best uh, blessing that He can bestow upon anyone. So thank Him, be grateful to Him, thank Him all the time. Don't ever quit doing that. that that's, that's one thing. And the second thing I would say to those brothers and sisters, learn your religion. This religion is based on knowledge. It's very interesting. It's just not an empty emotions. It's based on knowledge and understanding. And this knowledge is not going to be acquired by anything by to dedicate part of your time to learn the deen, to learn the religion. Uh, uh, this, this knowledge is not going to come by just feelings or just by uh, dreams that you see in your, in your, uh, while you're sleeping and you became uh, spiritually motivated to this or that. No, it's religion. You need to pray. How can I pray? 
I need to say certain things in prayer. What I'm going to say. There is a Quran. There is a, a, a prayer that you do every day. There is things you say when you get into the house, when you get out of the house. You need to learn so many things. This is based on knowledge. And if this been said, that leads me to the third advice, which is this religion is so deep, so white. The Prophet ﷺ said, no one can ever yeah, and you compete with this religion. Think that in overnight, I will cover all aspects. I get everything in it. No. So he said, yeah, and he Take it step by step, gradually, and be easy. Don't basically try to, or to think that I'm going to learn everything in one day, or one month, or one year. We are in a process of learning. That's why this religion, I always say, when it comes to offering good deeds to the worship of Allah, there is no maximum. There is minimum, but there is no maximum. That's, so make sure that you know what are the minimum that is required from you as a Muslim. Let's say, for example, you pray the five-time prayer. When Ramadan comes, you fast, and basically you know how to perform the salat, how you perform the siyam, the zakat, and the hajj once in your lifetime, whenever you are capable of making it, the five pillars. Then these pillars, when you have it, when you have it strong, when you have it built, you build on it. Otherwise, why it's pillar? It's not pillar just to be, have you ever seen a building has five pillars and that's it? It's a structure to build on it. So that's where the other things comes. You build on it, uh, basically, uh, uh, other things that you, you need to add to it later on. So basically, one, be grateful, thankful to Allah. Two, learn your deen. Three, Take it graduate, step by step, be easy. Don't rush to do everything at once. And uh, uh, the last thing I would say, that basically uh, this religion guide us to the best of manners. This religion guide us to, this is a very important aspect in this religion, the spiritual aspect of it and the uh, concept of mannerism and, and ethics. Uh, your Iman will not be complete without this aspect. When you are spiritually pure, when you are, and this nothing can purify you like avoiding the indecent act, avoiding the sins, and at the same time to uh, beautify yourself with these beautiful manners that the Islam taught us. Be gentle, be nice, be, and all of this, alhamdulillah, it's a common sense. It's common sense. So anything you see, you hear about the religion, doesn't make any sense to you, it's not common sense, ask. And, and basically, and inshallah, uh, it will be explained to you. We, we, before we go to break, tell us right now, I mean, the person, obviously, when you come to Islam, you know, many people who come to Islam, they appreciate Islam more than people who are even brought up in Muslim families. Absolutely. You know, so now, you know, they come to the masjid and, and they take that first step, the declaration of faith, that there's no God but the one God, Muhammad is the messenger, and now they kind of get overwhelmed. They're excited, they get the hugs and kisses, and now they come home, everybody's giving them a book, and they got about 50 books, and, you know, this person's telling them, look, do this, roll your pants up, this person's telling them, uh, uh, cut off with the girlfriend, he's put throwing the miswak in his mouth, and he's like, you know, excited, but kind of overwhelmed. So when we get back, can you tell us how he can balance this out so he don't break? Absolutely. How's that? We'll I'll be right back and shake, answer this question here on The Dean Show. But uh, you figure out that uh, you know, man has to have a purpose. If you were to take away mosquitoes from the planet, within yeah. a few months everything dies. If Every, you just took away what? The mosquito. The that, mosquito. That's it's, a fact, right? That's a fact. Mosquitoes. It's mosquitoes. But if you take away mankind, nothing happens. So this whole ecosystem, this whole wheel, this whole cycle, does it need you? So why are you here? Back here on the Dean Show with Dr. Sheikh Walid Basuni, giving some advice to the new Muslims, our brothers in faith who have made that conscious decision to worship none other but the creator of the heavens and the earth, Allah. So now they're kind of overwhelmed, all right? They're excited, they meet all their brothers, they just took the shahada, and now they got like 50 books, everyone's telling them do this, do that. They got, you know, all the sheikhs in the masjid now, everybody. Out of the love, people have good intention, but sometimes, you know, people can overwhelm someone, give them too much weight to push. We don't want the person to, to, to break. So what advice do you give in these situations? Uh, my advice is basically to set your priorities straight when it comes to learning the religion and, and practicing it. There is something called pillars. 
there is something of fundamental issue, principle of faith, the article of faith. These are the ones that you have to start with, and basically the, the, the pillars of Islam. These are the things that you start with. Aisha radiallahu anha said, if the first thing Allah revealed in Quran, don't drink, don't fornicate, and do this and do that, no one will quit fornication, no one will start, will pray. But the first thing was the reveal is to have that love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to have that faith in Allah, is to trust Allah, is to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to think about the day of judgment, to know that you will be standing before Allah one day and He will ask you about your deeds, about what you have done in this worldly life. The more you establish this foundation, you put these thick layers in your heart, this belief, that when you are ready to go to that next step, to go into these details. And I said earlier, step by step, the most important thing, the pillars of Islam. Stick to it, do it. When you establish it, when you have it basically down, mashallah, you are doing it very well, go to the next level, which is the extra prayer, the extra volunteers. And here I want to tell you something. Don't get confused. See someone who has knowledge, who knows of his righteousness, and let him basically your mentor, you're somebody that he can help you, uh, break this down to you, consult him. But if you start basically every person, a person, Muslim, tell you something, you might get confused, and you might also get wrong information. Because unfortunately, a lot of Muslim, they don't differentiate between culture and religion. So they introduce maybe to you certain cultures as if it's part of the religion. I know this guy, this brother in Colorado, he mashallah became Muslim. They took him downstairs, they took off his suit, and they said, they told him, change your clothes, now you have to wear Muslim clothes. And they put on him like a, 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 a sarwal or a pants with a long uh, shirt, you know, like this, which is usually dressed in certain countries, yeah. uh, kurta, whatever they call it. And basically they put uh, socks on him and shoes and everything was new and everything different color. <laughs> you can imagine and put a kufi and put kuhul in his eyes. I'm serious. Put one in his eyes? Kuhul, like you know. What is that? It's a certain like, it's a, like a mascara kind of. Yeah. You know, some people do that. It's, it's, it's cultural. It's a cultural yeah. uh, thing and it's maybe the Prophet son do it but also it's part of his culture. So he went back to his wife. He knocked on the door. And his wife, when she saw him, she thought that this is maybe a guy from Taliban or something coming to her house. And she called the police and he said, oh, but the, and when she opened the door, imagine your husband went to work with a suit and coming back with completely different clothes from a different culture. And he said, what happened to you? And then he said, I became Muslim. He said, what? I mean, is that what Muslim Islam is about? Is about the clothes, about just changing your, your clothes? I think this is... This is just an example of how sometimes our community uh, behave in, 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 in a wrong way with, with the new Muslims. I want him to look like me or my culture or to eat like me. You know what's something beautiful about this religion? This religion does not strip you from your culture. If you are a Latino, if you are African American, if you are a, a white American, if you are uh, whatever Chinese, whatever your culture you're coming from, Islam does not strip you from your culture. You stay with the culture that you but the only different, Islam put guidelines to control this culture. So if you cross the line and you do something haram, you stop. This culture stop you. You cannot do it. You cannot. Being part of your culture does not justify it. But other than that, it's up to you. The way you dress, the way you eat, the way you live your life, as long as you follow the uh, guidelines of the religion. So you, you, you emphasize getting to really know the basics. That's where it starts. The five pillars of Islam and slowly building from there. Yes. And then we talked about the culture. Anything that's good in the culture, good food, maybe even good dress, but as long as it's modest dress, you know, you're not showing what is considered immodest in Islam, you can like keep that. Like the color of the dress, it can be different from one culture to another. Yeah. Yes. Okay, and becoming a, a new Muslim, one who's submitted his will to the creator of the heavens and earth, you don't now, like this situation, have to put on a thobe and change your name all of a sudden? Uh, no. No. It's not, because no. this is prevalent. This happens a lot? Uh, yeah, it happened, yeah. unfortunately, but you don't need to do that at all. There is nothing called Islamic clause. It means a clause that cover your aura, cover the, your private part. That's if you're a male or a female, to cover her body. There, that's what Islamic clause means. There yeah. is, it's not to wear this thobe. It doesn't wear kufi. It doesn't, it does not to do with that. Yeah. Uh, you can wear whatever clothes that you want, whatever food that you want to 
they drink, whatever language you use, whatever name that you have. The Prophet ﷺ, so many people became Muslim. He never ordered them to change their names. And some of their names are not Arabic names. It could be, uh, uh, for example, Salman al-Farisi, a Persian, would not a Muslim country at that time. Uh, a Rumi, Suhaib, is Romans from, from basically Europe. He didn't ask him to change his name because it's not... And, and a, a Muslim name. There's no such thing as a Muslim name. There's no uh, such thing as like a Muslim name. No, uh, no? any any name which is, has a, a, a meaning or whatever. Yeah. it's a Muslim name. The only uh, now uh, un-Islamic names, if these names will have a wrong meaning in Islam, like somebody call himself God, that's un-Islamic, not acceptable. Yeah. Or somebody call himself I'm the slave of uh, so and so. So if it has some pagan origins or something, uh, yes, then you will be, change yeah, it. Yeah. But if your name is Mike, if your name is Tom, you keep your name. You don't Abs have to change absolutely. it. Absolutely. And you can continue to dress in your suit and tie. Absolutely. You don't have to throw on the thobe or anything like that? No, at all. Okay, I'm sure many Muslims are learning this is important for them because you know they, yeah. they have this misconception, misnotion also. Yeah. And, and also a lot of people became Muslims. You know, new Muslims in the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they always... Uh, uh, went back to their family. The Arabs became part of their family. And, and you know, to some of the new Muslims, the moment they became Muslim, they have nothing to do with their family, with their people, with their, basically, their, their, the people from the same, maybe, culture that they belong to. They feel that Islam encourage you not to be, uh, anymore, have a relationship with your mom or your family or, you know, that's absolutely wrong. That's I wrong, totally. Absolutely. Islam encourage you to be better, basically son, better daughter, better husband, better uh, 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 basically uh, father and, and, and mother and uh, uncles and so forth. So you have something so beautiful. Don't shy away from people. Go to them and basically share with them the, the, the advice that you, the beautiful thing that you have. If you think yourself under a pressure, if you go to maybe some family member, you're afraid that this is will maybe take you away from the dean, you cannot face these challenges. In this case, you know what, I would advise you to strengthen your iman first and you go back to, to basically to face these challenges in the future. One more thing, which is make sure that you hang out with good people. Friends is a very important element if you're surviving actually uh, in this religion. Make sure that you surround yourself with good Muslims, that people will educate you, care about you, take you step by step, and they will not take you to an extreme path, because this religion has not to do with being extreme, or they will make you just uh, teach you certain cultures, which is maybe it's not part of your own culture. Yeah, with that said, we're going to take a break and get some more beautiful advice when we come back here on the Dean Show. Sit tight. One God, worship Him alone. Do what He wants you to do. Put your desires, this thing inside you that just wants this and wants that and you just can't get enough. You know what? You never get enough until the dirt's in your mouth. Don't let it come to that. Be sincere and honest. Ask the one who created you to guide you. It's the first step. Put off. Chasing all the women and the good times and the parties and this and that. There is no one worthy of worship except Allah, don't wait. You never know if death will come today for you or not. Back here on the Dean Show, and we're giving some beautiful advice to the new Muslims. Now, I, I mentioned earlier, before I go to my next question, I said, look, look, we're following the same way of life as all the prophets. And I said that, look, Jesus was a Muslim. Abraham yes. was a Muslim. Am I lying here? No, at all. Actually, by, by being Muslim, you're just in the same path of all these prophets and messengers uh, that were sent before Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, what do you think Abraham used to t tell people to do? Believe in what? One God. Believe in one God, and yeah. I'm his messenger. What do you think Noah was saying to his people? What do you think uh, all these prophets were, were doing? The same thing that the prophet Muhammad was saying. Worship Allah alone, and basically, I'm his messenger. That's why the prophet said, قُلْ مَا كُنْتُ بِدَعًا مِنَ الرُّسُلِ I'm not something new. I'm just similar to all these prophets and messengers before me. And Isa, Jesus also, peace be upon him, also did the same thing. He said, worship the, the creator of the heavens and earth, and I'm his messenger to you. They never call people to worship themselves, no, men, idols, all. icons, saints, statues, none of these things, right? No. Nope. Okay, this is a fact, not fiction. You're getting it here on the Dean Show. Now, our responsibility as 
a community, when someone embraces the same way of life of all as the messengers, Islam, how should we help these people? Uh, that's a very good point. Actually, uh, for us as a Muslim community, especially in the, in the West, when we, when we see somebody uh, accept Islam and declare his shahada in the masjid, so many times we say, Allahu Akbar, we give him a hug, and, that, and that's about it. And, and believe it or not, those brothers and sisters who became Muslims, they need a lot of support, a lot of education to be provided. The Prophet ﷺ, after a Ta'if, the city of a Ta'if, accepted Islam. Uh, there is about 200 people accepted Islam from it. The Prophet ﷺ assigned for each one of them, uh, for each one of them, uh, someone to teach them their religion, to teach them their religion. So what you need to do when somebody became Muslim, we make sure that we follow up with this brother or the sister. There is someone in the community willing to take them step by step, teach them how to pray, how to make wudu in the correct way, according to the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. We must uh, uh, provide also a lot of counseling for them. So many of the brothers and sisters who became Muslim, they came from a lot of struggle, a lot of psychological maybe uh, problems, financial problems, social problems, and, and they found an Islam answer to these problems. But still, this is the theoretical part of it. The practical part is upon us as Muslims to provide a practical solution for their problems, for the challenge that, that they're facing. Uh, we must provide these services to them and not to neglect their rights upon us as a Muslim community. It's enough to be happy to make dua for them, to give them a hug. And after that, what? Who's going to basically help this brother if he was kicked out of his house or the sister if she was kicked out of her house because she's Muslim, she put hijab. Who's going to help him if he, couldn't have, uh, if he couldn't survive financially because he just became a Muslim? I'm not suggesting that it has become a, a, a completely welfare kind of system. We provide help, but we help them to stand on their feet, to know that we are brothers and sisters and and we mean that, that we really we stand beside them and help them provide the advice, the companionship, uh, them and their family. So many of the, so many of you Muslim told me, Sheikh, I don't have no family anymore, no friends. I'm just like new. And I need to see that support from the community. And I agree with them. Also, one thing I, I noticed, sometimes when a new Muslim comes to us, we kind of have some of Muslim, and I think this is very rude, uh, it is they stare at them. And one of the common complaints from new Muslims, they said a lot of time they stare, like they look at us, stare at us. Smile to your new Muslim brothers. Go ahead and ask them, how can I help you? Please, if you need any help, let me know. It's my phone number, that's what I do. Sometimes you don't need to stare and look and not reacting. Even some people are really suspicious about those who became a, a new Muslim. This is shame, this is really shame uh, to see incident like this. Uh, one of the things that also uh, I hear a lot about from new Muslims, that when they come to Islam, they said, you know what, we left whatever religion we had because the most interesting thing in this religion is authenticity. That it's authentic religion. It has a very clear sources, very reliable sources, just Quran and Sunnah preserved, protected. So when we became Muslim, we come across all these people, everybody give me an opinion, if me give me this, if me give, you know, do this, not to do that. I mean, please don't confuse them. Provide for them what is really in the Quran and Sunnah. Don't provide them what culturally you are familiar with or what you think is good. I remember when this sister, she became Muslim and she said, Ashallah, I was giving a shahada. So this old lady came and all of a sudden she came in front of everybody and she gave the mushaf to her. She said, Kiss the Mus'haf because you became Muslim. And the poor lady, you know, you Muslim, she got scared, she kissed the Mus'haf. They said three times. I was like, hold on, auntie, where, where do you got this from? There's nothing in the Quran and Sunnah. Kiss the Mus'haf. So some people, they are so excited maybe, and they don't basically realize that I'm introducing something. It's not in the Quran and Sunnah. Do you know that this is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did? And finally, also, we have to understand you Muslims, they make mistakes. They're not going to pray perfectly like you. They're not going to make wudu like you. Like one sister, she's a new Muslim. She came and she is not wearing a, a long clothes or proper clothes for the salat. You can imagine somebody pulled her out of the line. I said, hey, you cannot pray like this. 
He said, I'm sorry, I just became Muslim right before Asr prayer, and I didn't know what to do. So sometimes the Muslim community have to know, you know what, you're not anymore in Arab country or in the subcontinent or where you pray in your locality and you maybe you never saw a new Muslim before. You're living in a society, alhamdulillah, every day there is somebody accepting Islam. So open up for them, be tolerant, don't be uh, uh, mean. You know mistakes will happen. Finally, this guy was praying in the Salat and he, there is his phone rings. So he picked up the phone and said, honey, I'll call you right back. <laughs> so I thought this is so cute, you know, and after that we told him, you know, you can't do that in the phone. But don't be mad because the, he doesn't know. Yeah. You know, just, just relax, take it easy, smile, give support, you know. Uh, and, and, uh, and at the end of the day, I'll tell those brothers who became Muslims, you didn't become Muslim for me or for my community or anybody's community. You only became Muslim for him, for the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. If people want to get a hold of you, if they have some more questions, they're new Muslims and they need some more guidance, what uh, website do you recommend that people can visit for some of the questions that they might have? Uh, you can either go to uh, Al Maghrib Forum or if you have a question related to religion, stuff like that, you go to Amja uh, online. Sheikh, thank you very much once oh, again for the beautiful advice. Much. May God Almighty Allah reward you. Uh, thank I mean, you. Thank you very much. And some great advice for our new Muslim brothers and sisters who accepted the way of all the messengers, Islam, that complete and total submission to the one who created you, and that's how you get that peace. And some great advice, focus on the basics. The basics, establish a direct connection like you have with the creator of the heavens and the earth, the prayer five times a day, the zakat, the five pillars that he discussed, be around good people, and you can get some more information here at this number, 1-800-662-ISLAM, where we also have some people who are there to help guide you along the way. It's been set up for those people who want to accept Islam and those people who have accepted Islam. You can call us and we can hope and we'll help to get you along the way to continue the rest of your journey and continue to also tune into the Dean Show. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be unto you.